Good morning to you, my friends, wherever you may be in the world today. Alan Clements here from Maui, Hawaii, United States of America, August 12th, 2021. I hope this finds you in your heart, in your, your beauty, in your conviction, in your devotion to make good on the promise of your soul to actualize in your own unique, profound, courageous way your unique dharma, your unique expression and engagement of dhamma, your unique, novel, creative, courageous, vulnerable way to engage the innateness of consciousness as it rises through this, this portal called a body and mind. And it receives its information through conditioning and emotionality. And we see it and feel it and know it within our own mind. And we see it and feel it and know it within our own senses. We perceive events and we think and we feel and we see other. And at that confluence of I and other right there, the devotion to our Dhamma, our Dharma, our transformational engagement to, on the one hand, overcome complexity, self-generated fear, greed, delusion, and to evolve, to co-create, and to live within the radiance of these Sobhana Chetasikas, the beautiful states of mind. So welcome to today. Uh, part three of this ongoing series of talks, mind, art, language, expression, deliberate creations, if you will. I was thinking, here it is on Thursday, uh, and looking and feeling in my own yoga and meditation practice this morning, some of the more definitive formations that I consider to be the basis of my expression of meditation, yoga, and Dhamma as a living experience. Let me just state this very obvious point, how easy it is, and I mentioned this so many times, to live in the, the separation, the apartheid, if you will, of a preferred place to be to enact your or my own, our Dhamma. How easy it is to be desirous of a particular posture, sitting meditation versus living and being and engaging and listening and communicating meditation. But, and in my own personal journey, I'm trying every way possible to be holistically inclusive morning through night, night through morning, of a living, breathing, radiant conviction in being the best that I can be in enacting experientially Dhamma, Dharma, meditation, the intelligence of a holo holographic mindfulness, a fullness of engaging the complexities, the vulnerabilities, the struggles, the beauties, the crevasses, the shadows, the conditioning, the lapses of consciousness and context with myself and the ongoing rebirthing of these multiplicities of conditions within consciousness. Living your best life. <clears throat> Tomorrow I go to hospital to continue a more rigorous set of tests based upon some recent tests that have revealed complications with my own heart condition, my aneurysm in the aortic valve now. And so I am going to hospital tomorrow. There's a degree of uncertainty and vulnerability here in this, this mind art dynamic. 
And I'm thinking on the touchstones, if you will, of, of the basis of my being. And I keep coming back repeatedly in my own silences to these teachings attributed to Gautama Buddha. When asked what was the most abiding attitude that you referred to in evolving your aditant to become a Buddha, your determination to become awakened on the terms of the most heightened development of the paramis, the 10 states of excellence. And it said in the commentaries that I made each encounter along every life, along this long journey in fulfilling the vision of my aditant to become a Buddha, an awakened individual, a fully awakened individual. I made each encounter the most reverential experience of that life. Ongoing, 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 ongoing. It's something so, to me, so magical and miraculous and beautiful about the invocation to be so on your determined greatness, having such passion in your artfulness, in your deliberate creations of the formations of your own chosen awakening, deliberate creations. I walk through life, I move through life. You and I choose words in movements of our body, deliberate formations initiated through chetana, intention, expression and language. Do you know how often I would be encouraged as a monk and as a layman at the Mahasi Yekta? How well do you know your chetana? Something so artful and beautiful. How well do you know your intention to speak? How well do you know your motivation to act. Feel it, know it, live within it. Devote yourself to the study, the felt, meditative, mindfully intelligent study of truthfulness and the beautiful states of mind that you attribute to your own sense of unique awakening. Deliberate creation of cognitive formations done, I add here my own interest, stylistically. Aesthetics, tone, psychology, beauty, reference to the innate cosmology, cosmological basis of, of life. Whatever it is that we do to determine shape and tonality and musicality, resonance, line, form, wave, rhythm, any way I encourage you to write down in your own inner journal, what are the dimensions of your Dharma or Dhamma aesthetics? And to begin to not only deliberately create mental or emotional or what I would call Sobhana Chaitasikas, beautiful states of mind, formations of interiority that you can feel at the end of the day, a reflection on the appropriateness and the efficaciousness towards freedom and the beauty of your formations that they lived within your own sense of integrity, your own sense of dignity. Life isn't obviously an accumulation of wealth and status. It's the deliberate artfulness to create formations of consciousness. We are beings embedded in form and consciousness and the study of consciousness to know mind, to know interiority, the artfulness of that, to do it with grace and style and courage. Give over to your own sense of aesthetic. The Buddha was said to have said, I made each person I met 
the ultimate experience of awakening, the ultimate object of transformational awakening, the ultimate ground for the deliberate creation in the formation of the paramis. That level of vocation, that level of yoga, that level of meditation. It's interesting. I've been deeply touched and troubled in this series of talks based upon information that came yesterday of how the, the Masak terrorist organization in Myanmar, Ming Online, MAH, and the State Administration Council, Sat Masak, how he emptied Daong San Suu Kyi, Burma's state councillor and Nobel Peace Laureate, how Ming Online emptied her home of her personal belongings. And now, going into the seventh month, she sits, I would assume, alone in an undisclosed location. And I'm thinking of how do you make each experience of your life your ultimate object of reverence, each encounter. And this information of a house being emptied of personal belongings I made a post on my Facebook page about democracy weeps at this rape and world leaders are complicit in this rape. And Da Aung San Suu Kyi's father, General Aung San, would declare war on Ma Sak and I encouraged the foot soldiers in Myanmar's police and in the armed forces to rise up in revolt. A remarkable individual, Da Aung San Suu Kyi, and a country of 54 million men and women and children held hostage by an evil entity known as Masak. And how do we create mind art in that dynamic? And the occlusion, if you will, of these more difficult qualities of deliberate formations under full pressure. Courage, Da Aung San Suu Kyi said decades ago, is grace under pressure. Just, just with you and with me, let's just resonate in the aesthetics of grace. What it means to you, what it means to me. Grace, grace under pressure, a, a poetic, a type of very elegant, Dharma theater a poem of immeasurable meaning. Grace under pressure. Grace renewed repeatedly under harsh and unremitting pressure. There was something so violating for me, the removal of personal belongings the theft of those belongings, the pillaging of those belongings, and what we have is our own interiority at times. I bring this up because I'm inspired by the people of Myanmar. I'm inspired by my friend Do Aung San Suu Kyi, and their capacity to keep rising up with 
courageously deliberate formations of beautiful states of consciousness under the most dark, unremitting evil pressure. And so the landscape of our own Dharma awakening is fraught with eruptions and corruptions, and yet here we stand in the rare privilege times. I get to walk a beach, and yet I go to a hospital to be diagnosed and to be evaluated. And all of us are in this body of mortality, and we're constantly trying to remember our purpose, our meaning, our Dharma vocation. May I encourage you to encourage me? Never, ever give up. Where do we feel in that grace of our own soul and our own Dharma, that sense of conviction like the Bodhisattva to become the Buddha, I'm making each person I meet along this long journey of awakening the place where I have the highest opportunity to transform the complexity into the most luminous states of awakening regardless, 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 regardless. <laughs> when my mom and dad passed away, I was... I was the one who chose to empty the house of their personal belongings. The absolute opposite of Masak pillaging Da Aung San Suu Kyi's home of her belongings. And how do you bring this, this elegant aesthetic and the poignancy of grieving, all these emotions I bring up, because the deliberate formations are sometimes, you know, we must cry, we must hurt, we must struggle, we must get down on our knees and do all that we can to elevate the status of the best qualities that we know that within our own being we can manifest and we try our best, but sometimes we almost fail and then we fail and we trip and we have to stand and cry and we feel that quality of grace under pressure. I remember looking at my dad's desk where it was left as he left it just days before. Seen all the notebooks that he had meticulously learning new words in Spanish for 50, 60 years of his life, 10 new words a day. And his handwriting was always handwritten. And there was my book opened to a particular chapter, A Future to Believe In. And I looked at the book and he had made notes in the book of things that touched him and moved him and asking the meaning of certain words and highlighting them. My dad at 96. And there was something in the poetry of that association. And I go right back to the Buddha. I made each person I met along this journey of awakening the ultimate object of transformational awakening, mind, art, deliberate formations, the study of language and expression. May I invite you to invite me to invite our friends wherever you go and walk today in your grace and your goodness. How well do you show up in the radiance of the best, finest qualities? Because in an instant, the very love that you feel that's in your life disappears as radically as Da Aung San Suu Kyi's belongings were stolen from her house and my mom and my dad perished. And you're looking at the artifacts of the relationship. I went up into the attic and looked through things, the letters, the albums, the photographs of me and my dad and my brother and my aunts and my uncles and my cousins and strangers all throughout his life. 
from the age of 16 up to 96 images, images of the war, of their time together, their marriage, their youth, their radiance, a lifetime within the folds of pages in the darkness of an attic now being looked at and discovered by the sun to be decided on what to do and who and where and when and why and you're feeling into these images and you're thinking as I was at that time bringing it back right to the moment of the Buddha walking along this journey of awakening how much of our life is a deliberate act of our yoga our vocation of Dharma or are you just living in the theme stream of events and habits and conditioning? Deliberate formations is chaitana. Deliberate formations is aditant, a conviction on the vocation of your highest, most radical inspiration to achieve whatever it is that you want out of this life. Yes mind art and deliberate formations how well do we walk out of the day in a life to create the paramis of your own presence paramis the beautiful word beautiful states of mind what are they may i invite you to write them down what are the states of mind that you want to learn the language of the architecture of the formations of the feel of and go about the day to find events all throughout the day, wherever we go through deliberate choices and empower the Dharma formation of the paramis as the priority of the event, not the outcome, but the formation of love, the formation of compassion, the formation of truthfulness, the formation of the aesthetics of playfulness, the formation of kindness, the formation of eroticism, the formation of grace, the formation of patience, the formation of concentration, the formation of wonderment and awe and curiosity, the formation of earnestness, the formations of formations of awakening to your dharma. Let me encourage you, please, what is your dharma? What are the colors of cognition and the aesthetics of those qualities on the palette of your own presence? What is it inside of you that you want to bring forth? Learn the colors and the formations, the energetic formations of the states of mind that you attribute to your own dharma awakening. Let's not mimic the teachings of the Buddha. Let's enact the teachings on a personal aesthetic, the mind art of our own unique awakening and to develop every possible strength and fortitude and quality of courage to keep alive regardless of the circumstances. Grace under pressure. I've been listening a lot to music and both listening to the lyrics and to the sound and to the vibrational frequencies within my own body and my own mind and letting myself at times cry and at times go to my desk to write, to feel inspired, to think and to feel, other times to laugh, other times to get up and dance and move and to sing and to shout and to scream and to spontaneously create lines and sentences of poetry and thought, always in the state of novelty and creation. May I invite you, live so joyously that your life is theater, you're a director, you're a producer, you're an actor, you're a savant. You are a bodhisattva in dynamic action, awakening to the luminosity of your chosen. <clears throat> Beautiful states of mind. At the end of the day, after going through the attic and seeing my father's images, 96 years in a few hours, you look back, you wonder 
Who was it that lived all those hours and months and years, all those encounters? It all comes back, doesn't it, to quality, heightened vibrancy. I know it's idealistic and somewhat naive to think that we can show up with friends and life and check out counter people, questions that we ask in random, the way in which we smile at someone when we walk down the beach. How well do we pursue our Dharma and the vocation of keeping alive intimate states of mind? Imagine if we just dedicated the day as we do to our yoga or to our meditation to a living experience of radiant Dharma in dynamic action. How well do you passionately show up overcome sloth, torpor, restlessness, doubt, worry, impatience, sluggishness, righteousness, pride, indignation, shallowness, brevity. Do what you can to create a heightened sonic vibratory radiant eroticism in your relationships. Lose it in the space and give your magic a chance to show its miraculous expression. Be a sonnet, be a poem, be a song, sing out loud. The days are short and getting shorter and shorter and shorter. So elongate them with quality. <sighs> Improvisational, impromptu, the spontaneity, the spiritual treasure of Dharma jazz, grace on grace, holiness made holier, living in the radiant spirit of your cathedral, of your Jesus, your goddess, your Mary, your Christ. Take down the four walls of dogma. Whatever is required to make your life so memorable, make the event where you go, who you speak with, who you listen to, I don't see anything more important than not only taking the future out of existence, but taking the apartheid out of existence, taking the separation out of our hearts and showing up with multidimensional Dharma possibility and purpose wherever we choose to be and in that choice create formations of transformational awakening. Rise to the highest levels of your own aspiring greatness. My dad learning 10 words a day, highlighting things in my book at 96 years old. I'm humbled. I'm awed. doing things so well, it comes right back to the teachings attributed to the Buddha, living a life so in reverence to your raison d'etre, your Dhamma. What is your Dhamma? The transformation of complexity and the evolution of beauty, dedicating ourselves to that level of panoramic, holistic living in conversations as we move through time, mind, art. Coming to the end today, just a spontaneous sharing here, trying to explore things without too many notes, too many references, too many hopes of being interesting or articulate, but the spontaneity of shared being with you, with me, with you and friends, what can we discover there? Keeping alive the awe factor of wonderment, mystery, and the art of the beautiful question. There's something so magnificent to be with people who have a high priority of discovering you. The theft of Do Aung San Suu Kyi's personal belongings is such a statement that I refuse to listen to your eloquent spirit, Dasu. That's what Masak is saying. I don't have the capacity to hear your nuance, your subtlety, your beauty, your love of freedom and democracy. I've got to close it down 
narrow it down. I've got to put you into a prison cell because I'm so terrified of my intimacy. I don't know how to deal with you. <laughs> and you can be sure, as many people have testified on my Facebook page and Instagram page, in my dedication to Dasu and my outrage, that her personal belongings were stolen, taken from her home. That is one small step from permanent life imprisonment. And there that eloquent, elegant spirit of a person, Do Aung San Suu Kyi, the most inspirational person among hundreds of others in her country, there she sits in an undisclosed location practicing, which I know her to be able to be very versed in, insight, vipassana, mindfulness, meditation. I would not know what to do with myself if I no longer had access to human life. A solitary cell where Dasu sits and walks, breathes and eats at 77, in breath, out breath, in breath, out breath. I will make each breath a person and I will make that breath and that experience the most reverential possibility to keep alive my deliberate formations of democracy. That's so rad that the boys and girls in the prisons, in the work camps throughout the country of Myanmar are deliberately keeping alive courageous formations of democracy, courageous architectures of creative expressions of freedom. They're using their liberty to create formations of hope for the people of their country, for their cellmates. Do Aung San Suu Kyi, be sure of it. I've talked to her many, many hours over many months, along with her colleagues. They are adept at grace under pressure. Think of that level of mind art. We can associate with that elegance. And there they sit, there they walk, there they talk. Keeping alive, keeping alive the highest, most beautiful states of mind. Do Aung San Suu Kyi told me herself, even if we do not achieve democracy in my lifetime, nothing that I have done or my colleagues have done or my people have done to keep alive and to keep moving up democracy, a regard for human rights and rule of law and justice and unity and harmony and collective peace and prosperity, it will not be done in vain. It'll be the foundation for freedom and democracy and decency for the children and their children and the children's future. It will come. Goodness will prevail. Yes, yes, yes. Isn't that dynamic? There's every reason to despair today. The fear and the pornography of the corporate media and politicians and the medical pundits of hypocrisy are pushing upon the planet and each of us. Propaganda. And there's every reason to narrow into our own self-generated national, possibly imposed prison cells. Who knows? But let's keep doing exactly what the people of Myanmar are doing, what Do Aung San Suu Kyi is doing. Keep our greatness alive through deliberate formations of mind art. Never lose the spirit of theatrical creation of keeping alive the most magnificent qualities known on this planet within human consciousness. The quality of love as a deliberate expression of felt experiential yoga asana the deliberate creation of metta. May I encourage you to encourage me, dedicate our lives to the cultivation of creative metta, creative karuna, creative mudita, sympathetic joy, resonating with the joy of another, taking time 
when someone's happy to explore their joy. Make love with the events that led and keep evolving that happiness and that joy. Don't race through, don't race through. We are in this together. And may I end, you know, the song that I keep hearing in my heart that's come to me as a gift, if you will. I love music. And the song by Nick Cave, I've been listening to it, lots of variations, pushing the sky away, especially the, the Sydney Philharmonic version. There's something about my own circumstance right now on the cusp of going to hospital tomorrow. And having to clean my own attic, if you will. having to empty my own closets of memorabilia. I'm choosing not to wait to impose that on someone else. It's poignant to keep this Dharma poetic, alive, and active in the face of these more intrinsic conditions of birth, aging, illness, disease, discontinuity, death. We're all there. We're all in it. We're all wrapped in the same biological fabrics. I keep coming back grace under pressure, courage renewed repeatedly under harsh, unremitting pressure. I hear pushing the sky away. Listen to it, it's online. I got a feeling that I just can't shake. (laughs) I got a feeling that won't go away. You've got to just keep on pushing. You've got to just keep on pushing the sky away. And if you think you got everything you came for, and if you've got everything and you think you don't need more, you've got to just keep on pushing, keep on pushing, pushing, pushing the sky away. Impossible as it is to push infinity further than itself. (laughs) The conundrum, the existential dilemma of birth within context of infinity and complication. So crazy, the jagged landscape of politics, democracy, the earth, the galaxies, dimensionality. I close here. Mind art is my salvation. Deliberate formations is my vocation. Pushing the sky away, pushing the sky away is my most basic, fundamental, elegant attitude when I struggle with fear or doubt or uncertainty or the absence of hope. May I encourage you to keep encouraging me when you've got that feeling that you just can't shake. Keep on pushing, keep on pushing. Keep on pushing the sky away. Hope to see you tomorrow, 9.30. And uh, from my heart to yours, have a beautiful day. Thank you.